Good afternoon, everyone. Uh, this is Valerie Sate Brueggemann from CAR. And uh, I think we'll give folks another minute to, to sign in and then I will get started with this webinar. As you probably know, if you have any questions, feel free to jot them down for me and I will, uh, I'm not sure I'll be able to do it while I'm talking, but I will definitely do it at the end when we have a, a Q&A portion. So you go ahead and familiarize yourself with, uh, with this format in case you're not familiar otherwise. Okay, I think we'll get going. So welcome everyone to, uh, what day is today? Thursday afternoon, <laughs> I had to think for a moment, Thursday afternoon, uh, and to this webinar. Again, I'm Valerie Sate Brueggemann. I'm an assistant director at CAR, and I'm really excited to present this information to you uh, that I'm calling the, the mobility web. And it's the focus is on partnerships, business models, and innovations surrounding mobility. So today uh, I'm going to give a bit of a background on the project and on the database itself, discuss some preliminary findings and some unique business models that I've noticed coming through, and also you know, close with what the objectives were of this database um, and invite you to offer your thoughts as to ways that you can find it useful um, for your company and for what you do within your company. There's, as you know, probably, you an ever increasingly interconnected web of partnerships that are arising on all of the various mobility business models. And it's really interesting to track this. And the project came about due to some work that I had done actually in my first job out of college at a place called the Arbor Strategy Group. It was a consultative management and marketing consulting firm but they tracked innovations in consumer products. And I remember when I was working there, they were developing a product called the Innovation Tree. And it was built on the premise that innovation builds upon what came before it. So it doesn't come out of the sky. Innovation does not fall out of the sky. So if you can track, especially cross category innovations, you might be able to predict what might come next. Um, Cause usually there are some blending of categories. And so I took that idea and took a previous database that we had been building at CAR that was only focused on partnerships and not very robust and, and built it to be much more robust and to not just include partnerships, but to include business models, which I think makes this pretty unique because I, as far as I know, there's no other entity that's really tracking the business models that people are partnering on. And this database has six primary categories. You've got a company type, business model, uh, the type of partnership, and then the year that the partnership happened, a description of what it is, and a source. And I'm going to do a bit of a deeper dive into these first three categories so you have a better understanding of what they are. First, on company type, automakers, pretty obvious here, uh, the companies that are building the vehicles themselves and or transportation devices, whether they're pods or shuttles or, or whatnot. We have mobility companies, and I struggled a bit with how to define mobility companies, but for now I'm using the definition of mobility companies are companies directly moving people or goods. So the ones that you contract with directly to move yourself or to move goods. We have, and I'm realizing this is an older uh, slide deck, which I've since updated. It should say non-traditional suppliers um, because these are suppliers you know, everybody's a tech company, right? Tier ones are absolutely tech companies. Um, it, what I was trying to get at here are the, the newer entrants to the automotive and mobility space. Companies like Amazon, um, companies like you know, Intel, even though they're not necessarily that new, but their presence is getting even bigger. Um, so those type of software companies, telecom companies, that type of uh, company would be in this non-traditional supplier category. 
tier one suppliers, these are established tier one uh, companies, which we all know many of you represent. And then another category that captures communities, associations, departments of transportation, universities, and other businesses that simply don't fit into one of the four previous categories. Then we look at the database, um, the business models that I'm covering in this database. So I'm tracking 13 different business models. There's an other category which didn't fit well in my nice table here, so it's it's uh, not necessarily listed, but these are the 12 specific business models that I'm tracking. We've got ride sourcing. These are the transportation network companies of the world, the Ubers, the Lyfts, the, the Grabs, et cetera. We have ride sharing. These are carpooling companies, um, so, you know, companies that enable people to connect electronically via their, their phone, their smartphone most likely, and uh, you know to get to a similar destination. You're seeing a lot of this happen with large companies that want to encourage their employees to carpool to lessen the parking um, stresses on their, on their physical space. Car sharing, these are the zip cars of the world, the companies that offer short-term car, basically car rentals, but for, you know, by the hour. Microtransit, these are the shuttles that are uh, filling in where public transit cannot as easily get to, often on flexible and dynamic routes. Public transit, we know what that is, buses, uh, trains, etc. Micromobility, that covers scooters and bikes in particular. Subscription services, so these are, you're seeing, we were seeing a lot of companies just offer or explore the idea of offering their vehicles on a subscription basis. So similar to the idea of car sharing, but or excuse me, car, car sharing being like short-term car rental, a subscription is like a short-term lease. You get to get a car for a month and then switch it up that next month, or maybe it's even by the week. Uh, I think each one differs a little bit. Delivery and logistics, that's pretty obvious what fits there. Um, automation. That's a huge category. You'll see later it's actually the most commonly uh, brought up or the most commonly entered in this database. It's everything relating to automation. So that includes mapping, that includes artificial intelligence, um, the sensor companies, et cetera. So that is a very big category. Similarly, connectivity in smart cities and, and electrification, those are each big categories as well. Um, and, and they encompass a lot. And then finally, mobility as a service, those platforms, those software platforms that enable people to move seamlessly across modes to get from where they need, from where they are to where they need to go and hopefully in one payment system. So there's a lot of companies uh, focusing on that business model as well. <clears throat> and finally, partnerships. I looked at the type of relationship a company had. So that what I call or what I deem a partnership, just a straight up partnership, is if two companies decide to work together on a pilot, for example, or work together on some sort of effort where money is not necessarily changing hands, but ideas might be, maybe each are bringing um, in-kind contributions to such and such a project. That's what I call a partnership. And that's what I'm trying to capture as a partnership anyway. Acquisition would be, of course, if company A buys company B. A subsidiary, a subsidiary or brand is when a company makes a separate brand to focus on mobility or to focus on one piece of those business models I showed previously. Investments are, of course, when a company decides to invest in another company from a financial standpoint. And of course, a joint venture would be when two companies formally merge and create a new entity to focus on one of the business model categories that I just showed. So with that, I'll dig into some of the preliminary findings. I thought it was first interesting just to look at overall number of entries um, from, from the database by automakers. And you can see uh, there's, there's some big players and they're whom you'd expect and then some smaller players. And I should preface this, these data by explaining that this is not scientific yet and it may never be. Um, it is. I think impossible to capture every single partnership, every single investment that companies are making in this space. It is directional. So the fact that Daimler has 32 entries and Toyota has 30, really, you know, I cannot, in, in the database, there are two extra entries for Daimler, uh, whether or not that is actually, 
you know, the case or statistically significant, that the database does not get into those details. This is 100% directional, but there is still a lot of value in that direction. So with that uh, caveat, I'll, I'll get more into these details here. I'm gonna focus the subsequent slides on the first six that you see uh, that have the most. So Daimler, Toyota, Ford, BMW, Volkswagen, and General Motors. So first looking at Daimler, um, I, I struggled with how best to present this information and this was what I initially came up with. I'm sure there are probably other ways to do this as well. But I took the business model categories that I showed you before and I thought it was interesting to look at whether a company decided they could do something internally by just creating a subsidiary or a brand around something or whether they needed to seek a partnership externally via a partnership, an investment, an acquisition, or a, or a joint venture. And then the teal all the way to the right is when there's an example of both. Maybe they created a subsidiary and then that subsidiary partnered with someone else, or they acquired another company and formally made it a subsidiary of their own. So there are examples of those, which I'll show you in a bit. But first for Daimler, so originally they created an organization with a subsidiary really within them called Movil, and it encompassed most of this space. It was meant to encompass most of the mobility space. And these are the companies with whom they have partnered or created around all of these business models. So perhaps most interesting around uh, Daimler is that Car2Go, which was their car sharing company or car sharing uh, entity, that started way back in 2008, which to me was impressive. That's a long time ago that they were thinking about, hmm, how can we, how else can we monetize? How can we use technology to to monetize, you know, our vehicles? And they started Car2Go, this, this car sharing program back in 08. So I thought that was uh, definitely something interesting that I learned through this process. Um, you, as you see, they've invested in a lot of other companies and, and or partnered. Um, perhaps most impressively lately is, of course, the large merger with um, BMW, merging each of their mobility services. And with that merger came five companies, Free Now, Share Now, Charge Now, and Reach Now, and I think Park Now. And each is focused on different areas, as you see where, where the logos are on this page. But that was a pretty interesting step that two companies that of course are rivals um, decided that they, they, they're they in a better position if they join their forces together and uh, create all of these different entities specifically focused on these, these particular business models. Switching to Toyota now, uh, similar to Daimler with Movil, Toyota has created the Toyota Research Institute Advanced Development, I believe is what the AD stands for, that again is looking at all of these different areas. Uh, and they've got ePallet, which is definitely a concept right now, but those are those delivery, not delivery, but uh, pods that can turn into anything, uh, whether it's you know, food delivery or a food truck or, or maybe even transporting people. Uh, that's one of their interesting initiatives. They've partnered with a lot of different companies. And one of the things that I also find interesting about Toyota revolves around car sharing as well. They have partnered with Servco, which is their primary, I think one of their largest dealers in Hawaii. And they've created Hui, which is a car sharing program. So it's, a, it's interesting how it's an example of a dealership getting in the game um, and trying to ensure their own relevance into the future while you know, maybe pulling back a bit from sales and instead offering a car share program. So that's something interesting that Toyota is trying. Switching now to Ford, um, Ford has got a variety of different uh, internal companies or you know, subsidiaries focused on different things. They've got Ford Smart Mobility that encompasses many of their mobility initiatives. They have a separate LLC for autonomous vehicles. And I don't think Team Edison is an LLC, it might be, but um, even if not, it's still a piece of the company uh, focused on electrification, vehicle electrification. And they, of course, are very active as a company in, in this space as well. You've heard about probably their uh, partnerships with Domino's Pizza and using a automated vehicle to deliver pizza, I think in the Ann Arbor area where, where I live. Um, and you've also maybe heard about their, their foray into microtransit. They bought Chariot, 
which was a company, a, a microtransit company. And then earlier this year, they ceased operations uh, of Chariot. So clearly that was not working for them. I haven't gotten the details as to what exactly was not working or why it wasn't working, but uh, that was an effort that they have now ceased. And so it'll be interesting to see as time goes on how many changes we see with, uh, you know, these purchases or these these activities that companies start and then which ones remain uh, several years down the line. And of course, you've heard probably their partnership with Volkswagen. Uh, I think right now it's primarily on building medium duty vehicles, but they are, I think late, late last I heard is they're nearing some consensus around how they can partner on automation. And that should be, excuse me, automation and other advanced technologies. And that will probably be announced soon. Switching now to BMW, um, they've been very active in this space too. Uh, partnerships with Mobileye, partnerships with MoveIt, uh, which is a mobility as a service company uh, that they're trying to encourage people to get you know, more easily, more seamlessly move around uh, and cross modes. They've invested in Scoop, which is a rideshare company that uh, actually will be coming to our management briefing seminars uh, in, in August, as hopefully will many of you. And similar to Daimler, it's the flip side. They, they are, of course, the, they partner with Daimler on their various uh, mobility initiatives, free now, share now, charge now, and reach now. Volkswagen created Moya, similar to the other companies that, that that's their internal focused uh, subsidiary that's focused on mobility. And it's also specifically focused in the areas where you see the Moya logo, ride sourcing, ride sharing, car sharing, microtransit, and electrification. There are specific activities going on there. Um, and they've also invested in some other ride sourcing companies like Get, which is different from Ubers and Lyfts, of course, um, and Argo AI, as well as Mobileye uh, with respect to automation. And the flip side they, of Ford, they, they've partnered with Ford uh, and will likely be announcing more activities in this specific mobility space soon. And finally, General Motors. Now, General Motors is interesting because they are, of course, a very large company and they're also very active in mobility. However, they talk about it less. So it is not surprising then that they do not show up quite as much as uh, the previously uh, mentioned five companies do. That said, one thing, you know, everybody knows the cruise uh, uh, purchase, the cruise acquisition, and then the Honda partnership or investment in cruise, which is another example of automakers partnering on something, uh, you know, some of these advanced technologies. But they've started Arrive or Arrive, which is an internal subsidiary focused on building bikes. So they're going from not just operating bikes, not just like operating a bike network, but actually physically building the bike as well, because they figure they can engineer good cars, so they can engineer good uh, bikes as well. So that's an internally focused effort that, that they have. And somebody from Arrive will be speaking at MBS as well, the director of it, Hannah Parrish is her name. Uh, so that'll be exciting to hear her speak on that and, and kind of the strategy there. Whereas I'm just coming to mind, uh, Ford, I believe, invested in or purchased jump bikes. So, but instead of doing it internally, they opted to, to purchase a company. Whereas here, you know, we're seeing another example of them doing it internally. When we looked at the major mobility service provider entries, how many times are some of these companies showing up? Not surprising, Uber and Lyft being the large companies that they are and the recent IPO. For both of them, uh, they show up quite a lot, and you can see different companies uh, showing up somewhat less, but but still showing up in our in our data database. In looking at the business model entries and how many entries we're seeing per business model, I mentioned previously that automation is huge, uh, definitely the biggest, and electrification and ride sourcing are are next. Ride sourcing again, in, including Lyft and Uber, so that's not surprising why we're seeing Lyft and Uber being the some of the biggest uh, entries in the mobility provider category. And uh, connectivity and smart cities uh, uh, and car sharing are a close fourth and fifth here. And when we look at major non-traditional supplier entries, uh, you see Amazon showing up quite a bit. I know there's an effort 
I think it's with BMW to put Alexa in vehicles. So that that's interesting. And they've got all sorts of different plays with respect to their cloud um, for how they can work with, with vehicle uh, companies, especially from a connectivity standpoint. Alphabet and Google, of course, show up frequently. Uh, TomTom as well, a mapping company. Intel, owner of Mobileye. NVIDIA, the, the processor, microprocessor, uh, as well, rounding out the top five. And tier one suppliers. So it's challenging to, to grasp all of the tier ones, of course, and I am 100% confident that we have not gotten all of the information that should be in here by tier ones. So we are actively working on this um, to fill this out. But what we've seen so far uh, in terms of what's come across, you know, my desk in particular and other colleagues as well, Bosch and Denso um, are in, in the news a lot for what they're doing. So then they're showing up in this, in this database because that's where we're getting the information from. Um, I've, I've presented this quite a bit to various car related groups and I'm always asking for company representatives to share with me what you know what I might not have and what I might be missing so uh, I definitely welcome all of you to reach out to me afterwards and uh, and share that information with me so I can make this more robust and more representative of what's actually happening Next, I'm going to segue to some unique business models uh, that came across or that I came across as I was doing this work initially. So take the automaker Renault. They've partnered with a large construction company in Brazil to offer electric car sharing in buildings. And I thought that was interesting because Renault gets to say, hey, we're learning about how people use electrified vehicles in a car sharing system. How are they using ours? You know, I'm sure they're tracking where it's going, et cetera, getting all that data, all those data. And the home builder gets to advertise, hey, we've got this cool partnership. If you live in our buildings, you get to have access to this vehicle on demand you know, when it's available. So I thought that was interesting. Again, back to that cross category innovations um, and how it's when things cross categories that usually there's a really cool idea that that arises um, on the social front social uh, uh, you know sustainability standpoint we've got company the right sourcing company lift partnered with a nonprofit in Washington DC called Martha's table to offer heavily discounted rides for families that live in food deserts to get to grocery stores so that's an example of a company you know solving a problem solving a uh, you know, inequality in the, in the system and helping people get, get food, get access to, to good food. So that was interesting. And then finally, this I really liked, um, the ability to rent out your home, such as Airbnb or VRBO, plus the ability to rent out your car. So this whole peer-to-peer, -peer, which like Turo offers, gives us the idea for the ability to rent out your RV. So here I'm not saying that Airbnb partnered with Turo. No, I'm saying it's the idea of being able to rent out your home, plus the idea of being able to rent out your own car to, to for people to use. You know, came to this. Well, which is a great idea because how many people you know use their RVs all the time? I, unless you're retired, I'm guessing probably not. So why not rent it out to people uh, on the weekend or whenever when you may not be using it? So again, another interesting business model that arose. And then I was also tracking some cross sector changes. So we've got the company Lime, which began as a bike and scooter company. They opted to drop the bikes, so only sticking with scooters and start a car share program. So it's in Seattle and I need to follow up to see where it stands right now, if they've continued it or if it's grown or if it's, you know, if they've discontinued it. But I found it interesting that we're seeing an upward push. You know, certainly automakers and big tier ones uh, suppliers are getting into the micromobility space, but you're not seeing micromobility companies getting into on their own, you know, going up the food chain, so to speak. And so I found that interesting that they uh, were trying out a car share program, running a car share program in, in the Seattle area. So finally, uh, I think this is my last slide here. I just want to highlight the objectives of this project. It's one method of keeping of tracking a very fluid industry, 
um, as, as you know, there's news, ev tons of news every day. Um, it is it is an effort to keep up with it all, but this is definitely uh, you know a worthwhile cause, I think. Uh, this serves as a resource to look up the latest information about a company. So if you're wanting to know what's what's Scoop, for example, been up to lately, we can look it up and see. And it's ideally a way to note trends as they begin and also maybe predict new trends as the as the database gets more robust. So those are the key objectives of uh, of this work. And I also want to say it is funded, or it has been funded thus far, with uh, funding from the affiliates. So thank you very much uh, for you know for your contribution to CAR because that is what has been funding uh, my effort primarily. And now uh, thankfully I have an intern <laughs> that can that's helping uh, fill in some of this information. So um, with that, I will say thank you and. Uh, let me look here and see if I have any questions here. I think I saw. One question, I welcome you to type in any questions that you have. Admittedly, this is my first time using this uh, format here. So I'm trying to make sure that I'm looking at it correctly and finding the questions that I need. Okay, I see one. What is the overall status of the subscription business model? Are automakers try or OEMs trying to push forward? Is it profitable for the, and it's, I cannot figure out how to see the rest of that question. Uh, my apologies, but I'm, is it profitable for them? I'm guessing is what the question was. Um, I recently heard one company was canceling their subscription model and I wish I could remember which one. I can't right now. I'd have to look that up. Um, so I, it was something that I think they were trying, but I haven't heard any new entrants of late. Oh, I think was it Cadillac? Am I doing Cadillac is canceling their subscription model? I think it was Cadillac. So I would guess maybe it's not proving lucrative based upon the fact that one has dropped it and I've not noticed many new entrants or many new examples of subscription. Um, but I can certainly uh, look into that further if that answer is not uh, sufficient for you. And are there other questions? Oh, Carla just wrote, <laughs> Daimler's the one that canceled their, their Mercedes-Benz subscription. Cadillac is getting back in. So uh, that's, that's the answer there. Are there any other questions? I'm not seeing any. Um, you can always email me. My uh, my address is, is shown here on the screen, vbrugeman at cargroup.org. I'd be happy to answer any other questions you have. But uh, if, if there aren't any questions right now, I will say thank you for your time and uh, hope to, to see you all at MBS, if not sooner. <laughs>